Hello and welcome to Expressive Drawing. So I won't be teaching you how to do a very carefully shaded accurate drawing today. That really takes a lot of time and patience and practice. It has been um, proven that people can improve their drawing simply by doing a lot of it. The more you practice the better you will get. This isn't always so with other kinds of art practices, clay and painting. You may improve, but you may never become as proficient in it as you would like to. But apparently drawing, you can definitely improve in. But what we're going to be looking at today are different techniques, um, looser, more expressive types of drawing, often better for sketching. And you don't know quite what you're going to be coming out with at the other end. Um, and you have to work with not being too precious about the drawing. You can't get too worried about how it's going to end up, about having to rub bits out, this bit's gone wrong. You're just going to go with the flow as such. So we're going to start off with a couple of drawing games. And our first one is continuous line. Now this means that you are going to choose something to draw. Uh, I'm going to draw uh, this little teddy bear. I'll get an idea of what he looks like. I'm going to sit him over here. Now, I'm going to draw him, but I'm not allowed to look at the paper or the pen. So I will start off by looking at the paper so that I know whereabouts on the piece of paper I am. And then I'm going to look at him and I'm not going to take my eyes off him. I'm not going to cheat, I'm not going to peek, and neither are you. Okay, so the idea is, is that your hand and your eye will move at the same time, at the same speed. Right, so I'm going to start with the nose. I'm going to draw around. I'm going to do it reasonably quickly and not worry about putting in too much detail at this point, just so you get the idea of what you've got to do. So I'm going down the side of his um, muzzle, up the other side and now I'm going to have to come up here to go around for where the top of his head was I'm going to go back over for his ear back over this way I'm going to do his other ear go back down the side of his face he's wearing a little scarf so the scarf's going to come down and then I'm going to go back up around this little arm coming around now I'm going to have to sort of go back over bits that I've already done because I can't take my pen off the page. So I'm coming back down this way to do his foot at the bottom and over this way and there's his other little foot. Back up and around and then I'm going to do his arm. Right, let's have a look. Uh, hmm. Well, I think you can see that, you know, there's a sense of a teddy bear there. You've got his ears, his nose, his muzzle, his other ear, look, one arm, little leg, little foot there. His little scarf so yeah it's not it's not brilliant but it's quite good fun this is quite a nice game to play if you had a couple of people in the room then you could get everybody to choose something different to draw and then see if you can guess what it was they were drawing right the next thing I'm going to draw which is a little bit harder in some ways is this doll okay this creepy china doll so I'm gonna pop her over here where I can see her Popped her up. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to start with the hair, and there's her ear, and I'm going to go back up and around the top of her head. Mm, right, now I need to go in to do her eyes. That's not so easy because I'm just literally going to have to go in, draw the eyes, there's her eyelashes, around, up, down her nose. Her nose right down to her lips, up and over, up and over, across the little mouth. Right, I need to come up here for the other eye. Probably highly unlikely that it's anywhere close to accurately be where it should be. Draw my eyelashes again. Right, oh, now, did I remember to do the top of her hair? Can't really remember to be honest. Around this way, down. There's her neck and she has on a collar, large collar on her dress. Put a bit of detail in. Right, that is pretty appalling. Can't 
really see that it doesn't person at all. You see the eye here? Very Picasso. Let's have a more quick try. So there's one eye. Down into the nose. Into the mouth. And let's empty the other eye. Up to the hair. Back round. Back up to the hair. And round. Let's have a quick look. Oh, you get a slightly better sense of the face there. You can see, I'm, I'm quite like that one actually. I quite like that face. So you get the idea. Who knows what you're going to come out with. Some people are really good at this and uh, you can make it out quite quite well. Other people, like me, you know, it's a bit hit and miss. Um, some people have a habit of just picking something and just doing the, the shape of it, the outside shape, without going into it and putting the detail in. Remember to put the detail in. You've got to go back in and put that detail in. That's when things tend to go a bit messy and a bit crazy. But have a go. And, and don't worry, it's just supposed to be good fun. But also it's supposed to help your eye and hand coordination, help them work together. So our next drawing game is wrong-handed. So if you are right-handed like I am, then you have to put your pen in your left hand and you've got to draw with your left hand, okay? So I'm just going to use the same piece of paper because this is just playing around. I don't want to waste good paper on this. But I do actually quite like left-handed drawings. I'm a very precise artist. I like to draw um, quite realistically, um, photographically, lots of shading. So it's quite nice sometimes to force myself to draw in a different way. And drawing with my left hand means that it's reasonably accurate, but a lot looser. Um, I can't put as much pressure on, um, so it's usually a much lighter kind of drawing. I'm using a, a bio, by the way, because um, it's, it's just quite smooth and it's quite nice. And it's easier for you to see when we're using the visualizer but it's up to you if you want to use a pen or a pencil it doesn't really matter too much okay so i'm going to draw the teddy bear again so you haven't you know what it looks like so he's got his his nose and like that now what i can't do which i something i find very hard to do when i am drawing with my left hand. By the way, if you are left-handed, you need to be drawing in your, with your right hand at this moment. Don't cheat. Is that I can't do long, long sweeping lines. I ha I can only do quite, quite small marks to be able to control it. So I'm going to put more texture in this one. I'm going to actually try and try a bit harder. This is a nice fluffy teddy bear, so I put that texture in here. Now I'm not going to take too long over this. Obviously you can take as long as you like, although it's a, it's, it's a, a little drawing game. This You can come up with some quite nice effects when, you, when you're drawing with your wrong hand. And um, so you can take time and really try. When I used to have to do life drawing, which I wasn't madly keen on, I would, um, I would often draw with my left hand because it forced me to not worry too much about getting the, the proportions and it really exact and careful. Just It let me just get a sense of the figure and of the movement, the position of the person in quite a nice loose style without worrying too much. I know that um, I can't do a precise drawing this way. It just gives me a, an expressive drawing. Unusual marks. Right, little arm over here. And hair up here. There's the, by the way, sorry if you could hear my dog barking through most of that. He's very annoying. Barks are absolutely everything.
right if I wanted to go in you can go back in and put some tone in now I can't do it carefully I have to can only do it with like scribble drawings to put the tone in we'll be going on to scribble drawings into in a minute darker up there there's more sh shadow darker here a bit more shadow that bit of the nose is darker So you get the idea. Take your time. You don't have to rush it. And don't don't fight it if um, you you get you develop a particular style with your with your wrong hand. So don't attempt to try and draw completely normally. I think it would be um, a good idea to use a biro for, for this drawing because it will stop you attempting. You're used to drawing with, with pencils, so it'll try and stop you from drawing exactly like a pencil. And the, the, the nice light marks that you make can still be seen because the biro is like a little bit stronger than, than the pencil. Okay. So if I look my little teddy bear. Okay, so the next little drawing practice we're going to do, again, it's uh, a bit of a game, but you can apparently make a living at it. Um, I met an artist called Claude Heath, and he has made a living, um, or made a, a, some money at least, out of um, blind drawing, so the continuous line drawing. Um, he would sometimes uh, feel um, something and draw it without seeing it. He'd put it behind a screen and just feel it. And another thing that he did would be to um, do drawings with different coloured pens um, together. Now with our version of this is that we're going to um, take out two of our biros, can be any of the colours, and tape them together. When you tape them together Hold it down like that, so that the, the, the points are definitely together. Wrap the bit of tape, the bit of masking tape around it, like that. Okay. And then we're going to um, draw something. Right, here we go again, Mr. Teddy Bear. So, as you can see, you're going to get two lines. If you use them on the side, like this, they're, they're closer together. Don't worry, don't try and get them working t completely together. Right, there's the ear up there, the other ear over there, that's his little muzzle, little scarf here, and there are his arms. Right, I'm doing this very quickly again. Obviously, you don't have to do it quite so fast. There's a basic outline. Some people quite find this quite fun. Some people find it incredibly frustrating. Don't worry. Give it a try. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, just a, a black bilo. And I'm going to work back into it, putting slightly more definition and details in. But... I'm still having to work with all those extra lines that are there. I can't ignore them. I can put put some shading in, some tone, and again, it's an expressive drawing full of movement. around his nose so 
So you can see he's sort of building him, building it up so you do have a slightly more definite image. But there's no way of getting rid of all those extra lines, and that's fine. It's just going to work. The next step for this, if you if you wanted to, would be to do the same, but just to do it with normal drawing pencils. Just uh, but two 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 drawing pencils like that taped together and you can sort of build that up into a more traditional looking drawing but with all these extra marks giving it more texture and expression this is a good way to start because then you can see all those extra lines Right, so next we're going on to scribble drawing and a piece of paper. Now, scribble drawing is effectively a way of drawing tonally without shading. So, this is a tonal, a tonal drawing. As you can see, you've got dark shades there. You've got the mid-tones here, and you've got really dark there and then lots of um of white as well the much lighter tones to make tonal drawings work well always leave plenty of light for that contrast okay so um when i created this drawing this is just a, a photocopy of it i started off literally just scribbling but i did then go back into it and put in a little more definition, a little bit more control. So that's fine. You can work with the two. You can be complete scribble where it's just all over the place. And then you can work back in to get slightly more definition by putting in more controlled marks. But just, you know, it's quite nice not to try to control it too much. So I'm just going to go back to your, your basic tonal exercises which uh, you might have done in school. So something like this. This is cross hatching, which hopefully you might have come across before. So I'll just start with a simple little ball. These are good exercises just to get the idea of tone. So just draw a circle and then try and copy where you can see the dark shades, the mid tones and the light tones. So with cross hatching, it's literally drawing lines one way, drawing lines another way. So the closer the lines are together, the darker it will be, the wider apart, the paler. As you can see on this example here, these lines are really close together, they're quite thick, they put a lot of pressure on them. These lines are quite far apart, slightly less pressure, and it looks paler. Okay, so that's cross hatching. With cross hatching, you can still have your own particular style. You have got um, very precise cross hatches who like it to be lovely and perfect and controlled. And then you've got cross hatching where it's just really bits of. You're not worrying too much. You can then go across that way. You can still bend the lines as well. This is a, this is supposed to be a sphere, a ball, so I actually can bend the lines as well. And then as you come into where the midtones are, you make sure that there are less lines. This is a midtone up here. So you've got some lines but not too many. There we go. Like that. This is um, a scribble ball, which I'll move on to in a minute. This is stipple. Um, stipple is always slightly more controlled. It's the same kind of idea, but with little dots. So, 
the closer the dots are together, the darker the tone, the further apart they are, the lighter it becomes. You get your mid-tones and then you know, that. Again, with um, when you're even stippling, you have different styles. Some people are extremely precise with their dots, and other people are a lot more scrappy. It really doesn't matter. And you can, you know, you can use them all together if you want. The reason that we we do these different styles rather than just straightforward shading, of our straightforward shading, the side of the pencil, a bit more pressure here, less pressure. Some people really struggle with with the pressure. They, they really struggle from going from dark to light and sometimes it's easier to control that pressure when you're doing something like this, when you're doing cross hatching or stipple. There you go. That's your traditional shading. So th this is more graphic, it's often um, darker, um, stronger and you one of the main reasons you do it is to get a different kind of texture and that's what we're doing today with our, with our um, scribble drawings is you get you can still have a lovely drawing but it has a much different texture to it different feel to it okay um, if you want to practice your um, dark to light with your traditional shading you can do a um, something like that I always get people to start practicing. Start push down really hard and get lighter and lighter as it goes up, like a tornado. Also, it's useful just to know that if when you're drawing, if you're holding your pencil really close to the paper, you can put a lot of pressure on it. If you want less pressure, then hold it further down. And then that prevents you from putting anywhere near as much pressure on. So you can, do, if you want to do a nice light mid or mid tone, hold it much further back. When you want it to be really dark, hold it much closer to the nib where you can push down. Okay. Right. So onto our scribble. Right. Quick scribble here. So with scribbling, it's literally what it says. The more pressure you put on. The darker it will be and the tighter the scribbles so lots of um, i scribble by lots of little tiny curls again people have different scribble techniques it's quite funny actually when you see all the different kinds of scribbling there is and then as you come out towards the mid tones you put less pressure on and the scribbles become bigger with more space between them so then it becomes much lighter Okay, much darker down here, all tight and close together, and then it begins to open up. Just like that. Okay, so an example of my scribble drawing again. So to create something like this, I'll just do the top bit to start with, the trees. I'm literally just scribbling to get the tones. You're not looking for definition, the details, it's tone. Dark, mid, light. That's all you're sort of looking for. And then Here it's quite dark, so lots of tight scribbling. Here it's much lighter, that's where the light is hitting the trees, to define that tree from the one behind it. So less scribbling, further apart. Like and then you go dark again for the tree that's behind it. Now I want to put the tree trunk in here 
and I want that to actually have slightly more definition. So I will actually draw more straight lines here. It's fine. It's not like there isn't there's a rule that says you can't put to put um, a certain amount of detail in. Now, as you can see, say here behind the trees, where you can see some light through the tree trunks. I've still sort of put a little bit of scribble in. It's just random stuff, random scribbles, just so that it all kind of merges quite nicely together. You don't suddenly have a, a scribble that just stops. Try not to be too tight with your scribbling, as in, um, right, it's a tree trunk, so I'm going to do a tree trunk, and then I've got the tree, and I'm going to go round like this because I know that the trees are round. Try and avoid this kind of very precise scribbling. The whole point, because uh, you're trying to control it too much, the point is with scribbling that you, you loosen up so you get these random marks. Hold the pen, hold the pen sort of halfway, you know, about halfway down. So you're not too close and trying to control the scribble too much. You're not too far away to lose control, sort of in the, in the middle, so that you can do it quite loosely. Okay. Now, I'm working from an existing drawing that I've already done. Now, if you are a confident drawer, actually you feel that you um, have good drawing skills and you're happy just to go ahead and draw, you can draw whatever you like, that's fine. You could, you know, just draw, draw a pattern, just play with that. This is something somebody else has done at one of my, my workshops and they, it sort of looks like there's a sense of a bowl of fruit here and some feathers, who knows, they've just, they've just played with it. And it's made this lovely fanciful picture. If you want to say something more precise, you can uh, go for it just yourself, draw whatever you like. You can copy something, you could copy a, a scribble drawing that already exists. Now, when you're practicing your drawing, when you feel a bit of a novice, um, or you're not particularly confident, it's very good to practice using something that resembles what you want. So rather than getting a photograph of the trees and the, and the river, you know, find find the drawing, find the scribble drawing and copy it. Because then you can see where they've done lots of dense scribbles and where they've done much lighter scribbles. You can try and copy what they've done tonal wise. Um, you could, um, if you found a photograph that you really liked and wanted to work from that, um, if you can, if you can print it out again, in black and white, if it happens to be colour and print it out in black and white, it's much easier to draw something tonally if it's black and white because colour can be very distracting um, and it's sometimes it's it's harder to identify the tones. Turning something into a black and white photograph is much easier. Let's just have to find one here. Okay, so that, right, so here is um, a picture that somebody's already done, and you can see, you can very clearly see, right, this is really dense here, so I would need to scribble really quite dark, and all oh, this is very pale here, this is the, these are the mid-tones, so I would scribble much light, more lightly there, so you can copy from a picture that already exists in black and white. If you are um, really worried what you can do is use the carbon paper that i've given you so um you've got black white and blue blue and black either of those will be fine to use so what i will do if you've got your paper put your carbon paper over the top okay making sure that the blue is down that's the side that's got ink on it okay and then you put your picture over the top So I've got this picture. Which one should I use? I'll use this one. There we go. We'll just put that one there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 
around the rocks. Okay, there we go. Use a biro, um, that's because that gives you a nice sharp line and more pressure. Right, you can draw the, you know, just go around the basic shape of everything. Take it away. If you're going to spend a long time, it's worth taping it all down first. Um, if it's just a very quick sketch, then don't worry. There we go. When we lift it away, it's traced through. The paper does work more than once, so you can carry on using it quite a few times. Now, it's like, okay, I've got, I've got the shape of my rock here. Now, I'm just going to go straight in and start doing the interesting stuff. Don't ever be afraid of using what you've got to make life a little bit easier for yourself. Um, even uh, professionals use, um, uh, do, use tracing techniques of different kinds. They might not use the carbon paper, but they'll, they'll use some form of tracing technique um, just to get something down quickly because what's more interesting is what you're going to do with it. The technique, this, this scribble technique is what we're looking at. We're not looking at being able to draw a perfect picture and copy this exactly. What we want is um, to put something down so you're not worrying too much, you're not being too precious about it, and you can just crack on and get on with doing something slightly more interesting with it. And with the other techniques that I'm going to show you, the pen and wash, again, the pen and wash is the exciting bit. The drawing out of the, of the first, of, of, of the image, isn't necessarily the most important thing. The technique is more important. When I go into um, schools to teach this um, drawing technique and pen and wash and scribble, I will often get the children to simply trace a picture to work from first so that they're not spending hours and hours carefully making a drawing, which they then really don't want to ruin with this um, scribbly technique. So there you see. So you've got the basic state and you can then you can crack on. This is good for say portraits or um, more complex things. You know, if you wanted to do a still life picture, um, then trace out some of those things first. I've given you quite a bit of reference material um, in your packs so that you can use them if you want to. You don't have to. If you're a confident drawer, you like to doodle or you like to um, do your own stuff. That's absolutely fine. They're there if and when you need it. Another thing that I did include in the pack are these very pale images. Um, not too many of them, just a few. Um, I've already sort of scribbled over this one a little bit already. Um, and if you didn't want to, to bother about tracing something straight out, you could work directly on top of this very pale picture. You can see just about enough to be able to, to put those details in over the top without anybody realising there's a picture underneath. Okay, so you can use those. You may be wondering why they, a lot of them um, are Victorian based. There's an awful lot of um, Victoria and Albert and Oliver Twist and poor little children. It's because, there you go, there's one that, another picture that you, you might have in your pack. It's a little chimney boy, uh, chimney sweep. Um, I, I did a, a project at a school um, and it was based on Victorians um, and so I had quite a few of these printouts left which is why I've um, farmed them out to you instead. Um, but again, you know, it's just for practicing the technique. Obviously, you, you might not want a picture of a chimney sweep um, on your wall but it, it's a way of practicing the technique uh, without worrying too much about getting the original drawing down there straight away. Canaletto traced, if it was good enough for him, then it's good enough for the rest of us. Um, whilst I'm on that subject, it's probably worth showing you um, uh, carbon paper is quite good for monoprinting and it's quite good for, um, uh, for this kind of thing where you were you know, using bilos over the top. But if you were going to be using pencil to do your scribble drawing, it won't cover up the blue very well. So what you can do instead is make your own carbon paper and all you simply do is you get your pencil and on a piece of paper, a bit time consuming, but you simply shade in the back of the piece of paper. Okay, as dark as you can get it, like that. 
and then you're, that's effectively your carbon paper. Um, so the graphite is there, put down, if you draw something, it comes through underneath. Okay, and so you can make your own really easily. I often draw portraits and it's much quicker to use, um, to work from a photograph and simply trace the basic outlines. This is, the, this is where the nose is, this is where the eyes are, this is the shape of the face. Right, now I can get on with the interesting stuff. Okay, does anybody, you know, you can spend hours and hours very carefully drawing something. Something can go wrong and it's all, it's all lost. So, um, yeah, feel free to trace no issues with that it's what you do with it that is more interesting okay i mean this this is a picture that i provided of um, a scribble drawing you can see that it's quite wild um he has controlled his more because you can see where the the lines are going that's absolutely fine you can all develop your own style for your scribble drawing uh, let's have a quick look. There's a scribble drawing. You can also do it, scribble drawings, with your your fine liner pen. Right, this is the fine liner pen, which I. There you go. It says graduate fine liner on it. Okay. Effectively, it's really like a felt tip pen, but a slightly posh one. And you can use those to do scribble drawings as well. You'll get slightly different feels. You know, sometimes it can be more dense. Quite dark there. But you can do you can do that as well. Okay. There's the picture of a little girl done in scribble. And this is probably done from a photograph because you can see that they're just scribbled in the, the dark sections very lightly the nose and the mouth so not a lot of definition you can tell it's a girl it's a very sweet little picture but there's, there's not lots there's not a lot of detail of that and that's absolutely fine Right, we're going to be moving on to pen and wash next. So I'm going to stop it here um, and grab the necessary things for pen and wash, which will be your Beryl Fine Liner. Actually, it's not Beryl Fine Liner, is it? It's your, this one is a graduate fine liner, like that. Um, some water and one, some of your paintbrushes. You don't need much water, just a little bit. 